Let's bring in one of the Republicans who met with President Biden yesterday and can tell us whether they were serving hamburgers there, Senator Roger Wicker of Mississippi. Roger, it's always great to see you. I got this Venn diagram. I, I don't know if you heard Willie and me talking about hamburgers, but I got this Venn diagram, and I'm trying to figure out what states have crystal burgers and Whataburger. Florida does. <laughs> you, you all have that in Mississippi, too? Absolutely. We have both of them. Yep. But Joe, okay, well, don't, on. please checking that off. To please, yeah. please don't make me watch Bill De Blasio eat uh, <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> I, don't. I, I mean, I love to be on your show. I love the publicity, but um, oh, no. let's let that be the last time, please. Okay, well, you know, Roger, sir. this is where where America is coming together because not only does a good good old guy from Mississippi feel that way, most people on the Upper East Side feel that way as well. So we are, as I said, on vaccines and everything, we're coming together as a country. Speaking of coming together as a country, it's, it was so exciting uh, to me to see you and other Republicans sitting down with Democrats, seeing if we can't come together with infrastructure bills. You know, when we served in Congress, we were able to work with Democrats. We actually balanced the budget quite a few times together. Um, so I'm curious, how days, was the meeting yeah. yesterday? And those were the days, exactly. <laughs> uh, what, how, how was the meeting? And are you feeling hopeful that maybe a deal can be carved out here? It was a good meeting. And I'll tell you, Jonathan just gave a, a very accurate report. Uh, we feel good about it. Well, first of all, we made history. The, the president announced um, a, as the meeting began that, that the CDC had lifted the mask requirement. And so the question was, well, this is, is this the last meeting where we'll have to wear masks in the Oval Office? And, and, um, and President Biden said, actually, this could be the first meeting. So we all we took our masks off and made history there in, in the Oval Office. But then we got down to business. And, uh, and I'll tell you, the, the, the things we have in common, Republicans and the president uh, want to build roads, bridges. We want to uh, add broadband to that great heartland of America that includes uh, Alabama and Mississippi. And uh, ports, um, rail, um, water, clean water infrastructure, we all want to do that. And I think that's what most Americans think of when we talk about infrastructure. And so we have a plan that we've given to the president. Uh, obviously, he'd like to plus it up a bit. I think he knows that uh, to get it through the Republican uh, majority, uh, through, through the majority of Republicans, it, it can't be uh, it, anything approaching what he's asking. But we got to some, we got down to brass tacks. We're going to exchange specifics, specifics in the next uh, a few days. And, uh, and, and then we've agreed to give the president a more concrete proposal, uh, and he's going to get back to us. I think we can get it done. So, so Roger, so you, I think uh, it sounds like you all are agreeing on a lot of the needs, a lot of the infrastructure needs. Uh, obviously, Joe Biden had, has been talking about, and the Biden administration has been talking about uh, raising taxes for people making over 400000 raising corporate taxes substantially. I know Joe Manchin and some uh, more moderate Democrats have said they're OK going from 21 to 25 percent on corporate taxes. Do you think it's possible that any Republicans, I know what Mitch said, but do you think it's possible that any Republicans would even agree to bumping up corporate tax rate from 21 to 25 percent, maybe closing some of the loopholes? Well, uh, I, I don't think so. And I hope not, and I'll tell you why. We really believe, and I think the statistics bear this out, the economy was roaring back in February of 2020. Uh, the the uh, 2017 tax cuts, which lifted a burden off people that want to create jobs, uh, they were just kicking in and the economy was roaring. I'd like to get back to that. And I think what Kirsten, Jill, uh, uh, Kirsten Sinema and Joe Manchin realize, and I think really a lot of Democrats realize, it, we can fund uh, this $600 billion plus uh, of uh, infrastructure without tinkering with that uh, 2017 bill that really gave us uh, a lot of job creation. In, in, in February of last year, job participation 
was way up among minorities, among veterans, among females, and the unemployment rate uh, was was 3.5 percent. That uh, when uh, when you and I were in Kitty Economics. They taught us that you couldn't get below 4% unemployment, but we were below 4%. So let's leave, uh, let's leave those tax cuts in place. Uh, let's look at the other ways, and, I, I, and I'll tell you, the president doesn't want to raise gas taxes, and, uh, and so we're with him on that. He's drawn a red line there. We've drawn a red line on, um, on uh, income taxes, uh, but I think we can finance it a better way, but we, the, the main thing is we can get a robust, huge infrastructure package for the American people, and we can do something big in Washington, D.C. still on a bipartisan basis, and we need to show the world we can do that. Yeah. You know, Roger, uh, we, we talked briefly at the beginning in passing about when we came into Congress together in 94, balance the budget four years in a row. And I've been saying on this show for uh, several years that I've been, I've been warning of, uh, of inflation for 25 years because of big spending, because of deficits, because of the debt. Uh, as you know, both parties have been spending wildly and out of control too much over the past decade or so. Uh, and here we are at 27, 28 trillion. I'm wondering, are you, do you agree with uh, Larry Summers and even some Democratic economists that this time, actually, inflation does serve, I mean, inflation does pose a pretty big threat to us? And also, when you look at that servicing on the debt, uh, are, are you fearful that if we go back to four or five, six percent uh, interest rates, that suddenly, servicing the debt is going to become just an absolute monster for us. Well, uh, two things. We had, to, we had to come to the rescue of the economy back in March with the CARES Act. And, uh, and, and you know, it was hundreds of billions of dollars. And, and, and another Larry that I listened to a lot, Larry Kudlow, uh, was meeting with a group of us in the Capitol. He said, don't be afraid of the T word. The, the depression that we risk is so severe that, that we're going to have to spend over a trillion dollars, and we did. Uh, but th that's why the, the Larry Summers caution is, is why I was so concerned about this Rescue Act. Uh, I think the economy's coming back. I don't think we needed that much of deficit spending, so the president had to do it on a 51 to 50 basis. In the, in the U.S. Senate uh, uh, with reconciliation. So I, I think that I agree with you absolutely. The, the debt risks becoming unmanageable. Uh, where, you know, we've, we've had debt for a while, but it gets unmanageable. Yeah. And as interest rates uh, creep up and as inflation uh, occurs, which we're seeing now, um, we, we really expected this. Yeah, I mean, we can't underline it enough for people that are viewing, uh, watching right now that, yes, we're uh, servicing this massive debt is manageable when interest rates are as low as they are. But if they tick up two, three, four percentage points, it becomes an even bigger budgetary crisis. Roger, before we let you go, uh, America is opening back up. People are going to be getting on the road. Uh, put on your, your, your cap uh, uh, of... of uh, you know, uh, a representative for the state of Mississippi. Uh, where should people go visit uh, in Mississippi this summer, other than my childhood home in Meridian, Mississippi? <laughs> well, let me tell you, Joe. Where should, pe where should people go? I was in downtown Meridian uh, just last Friday, and it's beautiful. Uh, things are coming back. Had a, had a great meal at a, at a local eatery, and it was, it was terrific. I think, you know, I think... Um, um, the eyes of the sports world are going to be on Oxford, Mississippi this weekend. Vanderbilt, um, ranked in the um, top three in the nation, uh, is going to be playing baseball at Ole Miss. Uh, we need to win All that right. series in order to host. And I'm just, I'm just so sorry that the Crimson Tide uh, really didn't quite scratch their